<laughs> you can see the smile on our faces there. We've been uh, c continuing the conversation whilst you were uh, uh, off. Now, you can join us on uh, this conversation on our WhatsApp number 0556-310-887. Uh, send a WhatsApp to 0556-310-887. I'll very soon give you the phone numbers. Now, let's jump quickly into uh, this other issue. Quite a big one. Uh, in the course of a week, uh, the opposition leader, uh, Nane Kufado of the NPP, presented what he termed the real state of the nation address. Quickly, let me read a few things that uh, he uh, spoke about. Dan. He says that his intention is to reduce corporate tax rates, abolish VAT on financial services, and remove duties on the importation of raw materials and manufacturing equipment, amongst other fiscal incentives to stimulate growth of the private sector. And this is an issue that, of course, a lot of attention uh, has been uh, drawn to. Let me start with Mr. Uh, Jantua. And uh, let's start from you. For you, these are what will push the private sector to the point where uh, it will free the economy, create jobs, and provide what will push uh, the, the, the what fact is, what, that, what is that it, it what will is, is remove it? duties on import of raw materials and manufacturing equipment, uh, abolish VAT, reduce corporate tax, and all that, in a way to, to stimulate manufacturing. Is that what is the cost of manufacturing in this country? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, the major cost of manufacturing in this country is access to get funds to do it. The interest rates mm. that manufacturers have to pay contributes to the cost of production in this country. Cost of production is key. So, you abolish what? Duties? Mm. The duties. Uh, mm. Abolish mm. VAT on financial services. Yes. Reduce corporate tax rate. Yes. Remove duties on the importation of raw materials. Okay, so and then so. manufacturing equipment amongst other fiscal incentives. So, perhaps uh, this are you, your issue are of... You, are, you, are you not putting government in a straight jacket then because government also is getting mm. revenue from those taxes but what you need to do so far as i'm concerned is to make sure that the taxes that you put on are evenly distributed evenly distributed so that there are certain pro pro uh, pro um, products that you make sure if they are essential that you reduce to a certain percentage and find taxes elsewhere to make it up. Manufacturing is key in all that you do. Manufacturing is key. But are we manufacturing in this country? How do we start that manufacturing process? Mm. How, how will that start? So, let's take, for instance, dude sacks. Do you know how much, do you know how much we spend? Do you know how much we spend? for the importation of jute sacks in this country. So if we're going to start manufacturing, where does that start from? It starts from agriculture. It starts from growing the kenef, and that kenef is what you now manufacture into jute sacks. Has that process started? Do you know how long it takes to put that in place? So it's not just a question of taking taxes off things. It's a question of streamlining the economy in such a way that Ghanaians can take the opportunities and the private sector can take those opportunities and run with it. So, if you tell me that we are increasing cocoa by a certain duration of time, say in the next four to five years, mm. cocoa will be able to produce two million tons. And so, me as a private company now goes out there and starts planning towards it. And there should be evidence that those two million tons are achievable. Once you show me that it's achievable, I will take that and make sure that my factory or my semi-processing plant that I want to put up, I work towards it. And by that time, when the two million tons are now in, 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 uh, have been achieved, mm. at least a certain percentage will be brought to me. So. And I give a typical example of the Voltaire Basin. The Voltaire Basin is an onshore basin for all oil and gas. They said three quarters of Ghana's land mass is covered in oil and gas. We've started all the, the, the things that we need to do, the seismics and all that. Don't you think communication should be put in place whereby private companies should be told that, look, this is what we are doing in the Voltaire Basin. These are the prospects. If you are a local company and you want to get into oil and gas onshore 
Start your processes now. What would you want to do? What does it take to produce oil and gas from uh, onshore? Because the amounts of money that you need for onshore are much, much smaller than the amounts of money you need for offshore. So, as a private company, you will say that, okay, I, want to, I need to get a donkey head. A donkey head is that, uh, if you, you see some of the American adverts of mm. oil and gas, you see this thing going up and down, right. that's a donkey head. I need to get a donkey head. I need to get a tank whereby once I start producing, I can store it in there. How much does it cost? Who can I go to to get financing? All these things, you start working towards it. So that by five, six years time that we know the areas where we can produce, the private uh, uh, companies too are ready to take it. Capacity building in a lot of things we do is essential. And we don't do that properly in this country. Mm. So for instance, when government tells you that within the uh, four priority areas, capacity building is part of it. Capacity building is reflected in the uh, PR, P PRMA that some of that money should be used in the oil and gas sector. And then you find that government has used that money to buy test books, to do certain things that are capacity building. How then do you get the private company to now also feed into that capacity building uh, 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 provision okay. made in the law? I'll come back to you. We're still on this uh, city of nation address and the matters uh, falling out of it. But let me go to Nia Iko to uh, for his submission on this before we uh, go off on TV. Now, Ni, but the Nanado is uh, uh, state, the real state of the nation address. Uh, some have suggested that uh, uh, perhaps he, he, he touched on certain areas that they think that the, the president uh, did not touch on because he felt he's not made that uh, 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 impact on. Yes. I mean, if you go and paint a very rosy picture of our country, you know, and it's an election year to boost your chances, leaving out quite a number of critical areas, what uh, Nana calls crisis situation in which we find ourselves. And it's only fair that he will be given the opportunity to also point that out to the electorates. Are we indeed in crisis? Don't we have a large unemployment in it's this country? There. It's always been there. I Who said there. so? Did we have graduates mm. claiming they are now unemployed an and forming an association? Well, but he could have spoken about that. Mm. For example, national health insurance, some of the difficulties we are having, the payment being in arrears, and now some hospitals doing cash and carry. Either you bring money or we will not look at you. You bring your card and we say, no, we are not interested in your card. That is a problem. Energy, as if we have solved it within that short period that he claimed. How many promises didn't he give us? How many years did we take? It's been resolved. And then somebody comes and tells him he, he was able to do it within the shortest possible time in history. Mm -hmm. I mean, what kind of life is this? Have he given what emergency? <laughs> did he know about the emergency? The three and a half years, years, three and a half to four years when this thing continued. Mm -hmm. He didn't know. Well, we do it in this country where they told about car power being built somewhere. And journalists had to go and even look at it, whether it was on course, whether it was going to come. And what is this? But you no, know, no, that is so, in the crux. <laughs> Sorry. That is in the crux. Which All crux? Right. The I'm crux, saying. The crux is that mm -hmm. when your party was in power, yes. they should have been able to solve the crisis so that we do not get to this point. We, we, were that looking, was the crux. we were looking at cheaper ways of doing it. Today, <laughs> how much are we paying for it? Mm. You, we, we are all aware that with both oil and gas, once they start rising, we're going to be in crisis. Yeah. Because okay. all these things are... All right. <laughs> we all right. right. We'll come back. Yes. Let me pick we'll from uh, Honorable uh, Adam yeah, Mutawakilo. Uh, mm. I'm, I'm very... He came out with it. I thought he would have allowed the, the minority in Parliament mm. to have handled that. Because when you, the leader of the party, comes out and there are inner crises, it's finally difficult to be corrected. And as we did in our time, it was the minority leader Honorable Alba Bagwe, who was holding that one, because it's presented to Parliament, we expect them oh, to respond. This is election. Let me come. <laughs> this is when, when he opportunity. made certain statements <laughs> that we need to correct to make to <laughs> infactually. I, I only wanted to just, one, no, just let, let me just make a, a brief, brief a, a general a, submission, a brief. and then we'll come yes. back to discuss it. Yes, thirty thousand rules. He said the president said in his government we've done so many about three thousand seven hundred and seven. 
72 kilometers. Mm. He said during uh, former president could force down 30,000 roads. Then I sat down and looked, 30,000. How about my constituency? No road. <laughs> How about Northern region? <laughs> Only Yendi road. How about Northern Ghana? Then, is 30,000 really true? Then you have to start searching. And President Kufo, 2008, State of the Nation's address is there, clear. It's not 30,000 roads. So, oh, factually, what, what about when he was leaving <laughs> office? <laughs> no, no, he was leaving office. No, no, no. State no, of the Nation's no, no. earlier. If, but if, when he was leaving if office, if at the time of it, address. you are not able to cover even half. How can you use nine months to cover the rest? No, but you should re and you refer to us to that You see, one. the president outlined those rules that are under construction. Mm. That is in the course of this year, in this State of the Nation's address. Mm -hmm. And president, since 2001, these were the rules. It is here because of time constraint. Two, he also made that it is only during the MPP time, uh, this social intervention, IYEP, we should mention one. And he forgot that free school uniform is a social intervention. Free standards <laughs> is a social intervention. <laughs> a banker, okay. of which he is qualified to go right. for one, is we'll a come, social intervention. We'll come back. We'll come back because we'll be discussing this uh, issue. Uh, do you you wait for to come for and introduce <laughs> those things. No, let me, let me just take a wrap up. Okay, yes, let me just wind up on this issue. I want to wrap the Let me just wind up on this issue. I am, I am surprised that um, Honorable <laughs> went to that uh, particular. Uh, let, let, let me, let me correct uh, some few oh, things. You, here. you want to read this one because I am aware of what they are talking about, <laughs> and I'm surprised <laughs> that we are discussing this issue so much. You see, the president said something. That is Kufo's time. He said something. And it's very clear. He had talked about road networks that they had done. Mm -hmm. Then he went on further. Listen, let me just give you one. He says, Mr. Speaker, all the artillery, uh, arterial roads from Accra to neighboring countries of Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, and mm -hmm. Burkina Faso mm -hmm. have undergone reconstruction. Mm -hmm. Work is ongoing in various metropolises, municipalities, and district capitals to reduce mm -hmm. traffic congestion, improvement, public transport. Mr. Speaker, over 1,000... No, no, don't go. Since 2001. So, no, no, wait a minute. You should know better. There, there is, is a difference between feeder roads, right. right. difference right. between right. transport, right. right. and, and different... Right. No, no, please, uh, please. Let's get it clear. Let me... 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 Over 1,000 of feeder roads have been surfaced. Mm -hmm. Of oh, about 4,800 have undergone rehabilitation. 10,000 kilometers have undergone spot Nineteen ninety three to two thousand and sixteen. We'll deal with it. But good. let me and it is included. Right. 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 No, okay. Uh, our viewers on TV we're okay. grateful no that uh, you stayed there to be part of our no show. Honorable uh, no uh, me Ayukreo no is a senior no member of the NPP. Adam with our Kilo is a member of Parliament for Damongo. Edgar Wedo is an insurance and tax analyst. And then Mr. Kwame Jantwa is a a member of the CPP. Uh, those of you watching us on TV, we're grateful that you stay there. And uh, we are back same time next week, uh, 7 a.m. to 9. But you are still listening to us on 3FM 92.7. And I told you earlier that I'll get you the phone lines and the WhatsApp number so that you can send your comments to 0556 310887. That's the WhatsApp number, 0556 310887. And 0302763455. 0302763453. Thanks so much for watching us on TV. We're still live on 3FM 92.7. You can join the conversation now. We'll open the phone lines and get you the chance to also uh, speak to the issues we're raising here. Edgar, let, let me continue uh, with you. Uh, we're going into detail yeah. on the 
uh, uh, issues that we have raised. Uh, Honorable, I'll come back. I just want Edgar to start because yeah. uh, uh, he was he didn't yeah, speak you, uh, before yes, okay. we <laughs> went off TV. <laughs> so, Edgar, yeah. the, the 